I needed something. I forgot. <gasps> yes, that's what. Okie dokie. What's going on you guys? Welcome to another awesome video where I'll be using SolidWorks and 3D printing to show you how you can do awesome multi-material printing. Multi-material printing can only be done with specific machines. There are a few of them on the market. Most only have two extruders, but the one that I use has four, which means I can use up to four colors at once. Now, how is this beneficial? Well, if you're creating a product where that has multiple areas on it that needs different colors, maybe even sometimes different materials, before you would have to print them all separately. I had to print out each individual one in different colors and that means I had to glue them together. This also meant I had to take some design time to actually create pins and creating tolerancing so that they can all fit together real easily. But with multi-material printing, you don't need to worry about any of that. You just make the model, hit print, select your colors and it prints away. No tolerancing is needed, no splitting them apart or anything. This also means you can put together really complex parts. Now, the other advantage to multi-material printing is that you can start printing with dissolvable support material. Dissolvable support material allows you to create very complex shapes and put support absolutely everywhere. And then that material is then put in water and dissolved away and you have a much better looking part. Perfect example is these two balls. Ball number one was printed with very basic support and you can see how the bottom of the ball is really, really ugly. The other one was printed with soluble material and you can see it came out so much better. It's a lot more round at the bottom, but soluble material has a massive disadvantage. This disadvantage is it is very expensive. So depending where you go will depend how much it will cost. I got mine from a company called Rigid Ink. Now, this is a spool of 300 gram PLA black. This costs around 12 pounds. For 300 grams of PVA filament, that's 40 pounds. That's almost four times the price of this. So printing with this is very, very expensive. You also come across the issue that as soon as you start making larger items, you need more support which means you use more of the support material and it costs you more to print. But some of these companies have been absolute geniuses. They created a thing called interface supports. What this does is it will build up normal PLA support along with the model until it gets to about two or maybe three millimeters before the support material needs to actually touch the model. Then it will stop printing the support in PLA or whatever material you're using and it will print it in soluble material. This saves a lot of money when it comes to this. So let me give you some tips on how I made some of these models and how to actually design models for multi-material. So I start off with the head. I created the profile on the right plane, um, the front profile on the front plane, and the top profile on the top plane. I use these profiles to then use this to create surfaces to create the shape. I only did one half because I was going to mirror it over on, the, on itself. And then I added some fillers just to shape it up made a basic ball for the eye, for the jaw, I just extruded it out. I created a surface offset of the actual head and I used that to split away the body and make the jaw actually shape to the contour of the head. Wherever one body was intersecting another, I used that body to split it and make sure that it's there are two surfaces touching each other. This just makes it a lot easier for the printer to understand where it needs to print. I only started merging a lot of the bodies once I knew what bodies are going to be what color. I then saved each of the individual colors that I was gonna do as individual STLs, and that's the finished product. I just had to peel away a bit of the support material that was there. Luckily, it was fairly easy with some tools. Now, the line across the top of the head, that was just where I ran out of blue material during the print and had to change it over, and the printer just got a little bit confused, and I was able to save it and print the rest of the print. Important rule there is make sure you have enough material. Mm -hmm. 
once I got all the support material, it was finished. And I was fairly happy with this result. The next design I was working on was the ball in a box. I created the basic profile that I wanted and then I used a loft to create the shape that I wanted and to cut it all away. Once I had the box, added a bunch of fillets on it to make it nice and round and organic. And then I revolved the ball inside and made sure it wasn't touching and again saved them separately. This is the printing of the ball in the box with the soluble material. The white material you can see is the soluble material. Um, which is printing just below the red. As soon as it's done with that, it just carries on with the red, stops the soluble material, and then puts some more on the top of the ball. Essentially, making sure that no, sub no PLA support material is touching a PLA part, so that when it gets dissolved, it just disappears. So if you saw those time lapses, you're probably wondering, what was that big block at the back? This here is a purge tower. So this gets printed along with the model. And the biggest problem with this, this weighs up to three times as much as this. This is a solid block of plastic, but it serves a purpose. Say you're switching from gray to yellow. You can't just pull out the gray and insert the yellow. There will still be some gray material in. So what you need to do is you need to actually purge the nozzle from that gray material and that's done on here. This will purge out enough material until it's cleared out and you start printing with the correct color. This is one of the biggest downfalls is the material waste in doing this. But you've got to balance the idea of it. You, you've got to think about it that, you know, would you want to print this in one go or do you want to print it in all different pieces with support material and then have to sit and glue it and assemble it? You've got to find that balance. I mean, no matter how big this model could take up the entire bed, this will hold the same footprint. It will just be just as tall. So I wanted to print an object in an object, but Unfortunately, the printing process didn't go as well as I'd hoped. These were too brittle and they kept breaking. But I got one successful one out, which is fantastic. I also got a couple of balls out. Yay! They bounce. But I made a little mini one so that you can actually see the interface support material. This is a good example of how you can use multi-material and soluble materials together. So you can have two different colored things and a lot of support to hold it in place. And it's a very, very clean model in the end. The last thing I printed, which makes sense, since this is SolidWorks, I made the SolidWorks logo cube. Very, very simple model, but, and very, very easy to print. I'm going to show you how I made the SolidWorks block. Started with me making a sketch to create a 50 by 50 block, which I was going to use as the block. On this face, we'll sketch a text. I'm gonna put, this is where I'm gonna put the S, pretty much. We'll look at that straight on. We'll use the text tool. Just type a simple S, but we'll use the document font and we'll, we'll get rid of the use document font and we will choose our own font. I wanna use the um, impact because I know it's a very bold font. Just trying to get an idea of the size first. And I'm trying to center it so it looks good. Once I was happy with that, I then decided to extrude it out, but I wanted to extrude it off the mid plane so that I can make it even two millimeters on one side and two millimeters on the other side. And I deselect the merge result box because I don't want it to be merged. If you merge it, the printer is going to think that you print it, You want to print it in one material. I then select on the face on the right, look at it straight on, type in a W, D 
deselect use document font click on font change it to the same height that I used for the S which was 40 and change it to impact text and then I'll center it up so that it looks good once I was happy tick the box and then did the exact same thing where I extruded it through a mid plane four millimeters so that I have two millimeters on either side and deselected the merge result box ticked it and I was happy with that now we can't just leave it like this we need to make cavities in the actual box where the S and the W is intersecting we'll add some fillets first just to get our shape Now we'll look into why we need to create cavities for the S and the W. When the two models intersect, this is pretty much what the software will see, what the slicer will see. It will see that the two bodies are intersecting and will create a negative space. So it means that the S and the W are holding on by just a corner onto the actual body and it will just fall off pretty much. So to do this really quickly, I just sketch on the surface of the S, click on the face, and click Convert Entities. This will turn that entire outline of the surface that I just clicked into a single sketch. And I'll extrude that by four millimeters. I use the feature scope, and I select the body that I want it to affect. I do the exact same thing with the W. Sketch, Convert Entities, Extrude cut, same four millimeters, feature scope, and select the body. So now when I section it, you can see that it looks like one entire body, which is exactly what we want. This will allow it to build in two parameters, which we'll show you in a in a bit. So I selected the body here, I hit, I hit uh, edit appearance just to change it to the red that I wanted. This is just to kind of visualize what it will look like with the two colors. Clicked on the S and the W bodies, used edit appearance again, and selected a white color. And that looks good. Changes to an isometric view, just like in the logo. So now I need to save the files. So I'm just going to click on a face on the body that I want to, to save. Go File, Save As, select STL, and say Save. I'm going to select Block. That's my file name. I'm going to say Yes. This window will pop up if you select a face. And I want to uh, use the selected body. So whatever face you clicked on, on, clicked on, it will recognize that as the body. So the S and the W will be saved as a separate STL. So this is important. You need to save each individual colors that you want to print as different STLs. So I'll save that. Selected bodies and say OK. And it's all saved. So we're going to switch to the slicer for the multi-material printer that I'm using. All I've done is imported the STL block, clicked and dragged it in. You can see it's missing the S and the W. I then need to go and edit that specific, that specific file, and I need to load an extra part that is linked to it, which is the letters. And you can see now in the preview window, it shows it there. I then need to select which STL I want to be associated with which extruder. And then I'm going to rotate it in the correct orientation. center it and give it this edgy 45 degree angle because it's cool I'm going to switch the printer to be a multi-material type 
can see on the right hand side it gives you four different options for different materials for whatever materials in which nozzle and the little orange block invisible block thing on the right that is the purge tower position you can actually move that around to wherever you want now you can see the red will be printed in the orange section and the white will be printed in the blue section and this is where it's important to make sure you have separate bodies you can see that it was creating two perimeters between the s and the w and the actual block so i'm just going through double checking that this file looks good making sure it'll print all right there's no errors and once i'm happy i send it Multi-material has a lot of advantages, but it has a lot of disadvantages. It can help in time, it, it can help save you time in design, it can help save you time in post-processing. But that time is then made up in the time that it takes to print. It takes a little bit longer to print multi-material than just one monotone. There is also a lot of waste material. But again, you need to balance that out in terms of how much time you want to spend post-processing or pre-processing and designing it. It's a very, very fine balance that one needs to have a look at. The biggest advantage I find with a multi-material printer is using soluble materials, allowing to do a lot more complex designs and having the freedom to design whatever you want and not having to follow the normal design constraints of FDM printing. Those kind of constraints that you try and consider to avoid support material. You don't need to worry about that. This material just melts away in a little goopy mess. But dissolvable material is very tricky to print with. Again, it's a balance. I hope I answered some of the burning questions about multi-material printing. If you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Multi-material isn't a new thing, but it's only recently come to light and being used more and more. And it's an exciting thing to be a part of and get involved with and try and experiment and do new things with because that's how technology evolves is by you using it please like and comment on this video and we'll see you guys in the next time